Hello, this video is going to explain what network analysis is, sometimes known as critical path analysis. I'm just going to look in this video at understanding network diagrams <clears throat> and then we'll interpret them a bit more in the next video. So a network analysis or a critical path analysis as it's sometimes called, uh, it's a management tool that they use to break down a project into its component tasks to ensure the project is completed. In other words, a project is likely to have a number of different activities in order to complete it. So, you know, you often hear the example of making a cup of tea. You need to fill the kettle, get the tea bags out, clean a mug, get milk, uh, put sugar in the mug, etc. Okay, so any project, obviously business projects are on a much bigger scale than that, but any uh, activity, you can break it down into its component parts and the critical path of the activities that will delay the project if it's not completed on time. Probably understand that a little bit better if we have a look at an example. So this is an example from an old uh, AQA Buzz 3 paper where uh, the task in this case was um, to start a car club, one of those things like Zipcar where you can uh, join as a member and you get a card and then you book a car and you go and wave your card at the car and it opens up and you can drive that car for a day or so. So this is for opening a car club. The tasks are the different activities that need to be completed and when it's put together um, it looks like this. So let's just try and interpret that a little bit more. <clears throat> Hopefully you can see this okay. Um, so what we've got here is a diagram that has got these circles on it. The circles are called nodes and they represent the start and the end of an activity. The numbers in the left hand side actually don't mean very much, they're just the number of the nodes. So don't worry too much about the number on the left hand side. The numbers on the right hand side are far more important for understanding the diagram. So the nodes, these circles, do not represent an activity. It's the line between the nodes that represents the activity. Um, and activity A in this case is conducting market research. And the duration of that activity is two weeks. So it's going to take two weeks for this um, organisation to collect its market research. Each node has got two numbers on the right hand side. The, the earliest start time is in the top right. So the earliest start time represents the first moment the activity can commence given the activities that needed to complete it before it. Um, so uh, in this case Activity A isn't waiting on anything else. We can start Activity A right at the beginning. So we could start Activity A if we wanted at zero weeks. Um, it then takes two weeks for Activity A to be completed. So the earliest possible time we could start Activity D, which is represented by this node here, is two weeks. Okay, equally Activity B takes 10 weeks. We can start it at week zero. The earliest time we can start activity E is 10 weeks. So the bottom right is the latest finish time. And the latest finish time represents the last possible moment this activity should be completed by without the delay in the project. <clears throat> so let's um, have a look again at activity A, which takes two weeks. Well, activity A um, takes takes two weeks to do so we could start it in week zero and we could start activity D in uh, week two. However there is some slack with activity A it's not on the critical path so we actually we could delay the start of activity A until week nine because the latest time we've got to finish it is week 11. Um, if we start it in week nine we should finish in week 11 and therefore we won't delay the project overall. Um, so the as long as activity A is finished by week 11, activity D can start on time and it won't delay the overall project. Um, activity um, E, um, in order to start activity E and not delay the overall project, activity B needs to be the latest time it can finish is 10 weeks. Um, so actually activity B, E, uh, 
G and J are the critical path for this. There's no slack amongst these, but these little activities here where there's um, different numbers in the nodes, that shows there's some slack. For example, um, activity H here, as long as it's completed by week 17, um, won't delay the overall project. So yeah, we can see the critical path. Um, and these activities that have float time can be finished first and workers can be redeployed. So we could get them done and then we can redeploy workers to something else. Or we can start them late and maybe not employ people to do them until the last minute. Um, or we can take more time over them, maybe employ fewer people to do them, maybe take a little bit more time to do this market research and employ uh, fewer people to do it. So, um, I'll go into a bit more detail on how to calculate uh, the critical path in the next video, but I think that's probably enough for now. Hopefully that uh, gives you an idea about what this critical path network analysis looks like.